Hi, I'm Piyush. Welcome to the second video on the series of uh, inventory management. We're going to talk of cost, the classification, the inventory decisions and the inventory metrics. I hope you have seen the video one because that will clear the basics. All right, so let's jump into the topic that we have here. Now, the first thing that we're going to discuss here is the inventory cost. At this point, there are two kinds of cost. One is the cost of not having enough inventory and second is the cost of having too much inventory. So there are only two categories. In not having enough, the first cost that um, we incur is we call it the cost of stockouts. Because I don't have enough material, the customers may not get the material or my factory may not get the material to production. So in stockouts, the costs are divided into primarily three categories. One is what we call as lost sale. The customer comes to my shop, is not able to get what uh, she wants, but next time comes back to me. One second is what we call as a back order. So customer comes to my shop, is not able to get what she wants, but um, I can give a, create a special delivery for the customer and um, so the customer buys from me and I have the cost of special delivery. And the third is what we call as the lost customer. So the customer comes to me, does not get the product that she wants, so becomes a permanent customer of my competitor. So we have a lost customer. So these are three primary um, cost of not having enough. Sometimes because we don't have enough, um, we have to incur additional planning cost. Okay, we have to plan frequently and the cost of manpower associated with planning. Um, is also a cost of not having enough. Sometimes because we don't have enough, we will have to have frequent transportation. So the frequent transportation uh, is also a cost of not having enough inventory. Uh, having too much, there is a huge chunk of cost. Because we have too much, we have cash blocked. So the cost of this cash blocked is completely because we have to. So if, if I did not have the inventory, I could use the money somewhere else. I could park it in a bank and earn interest. I could invest in some other form of business and earn money. Uh, then I also have cost of space because I have too much inventory. I will need some space to park it. So that space cost uh, is the cost of inventory. I will spend more money on insurance because I have more material. I have to insure it. Uh, my goods could get obsolete. I could, um, you know, they could get old and I could not, I will maybe, I'm not able to sell off the goods. Uh, I could have pilferage. Uh, somebody may, because I have too much, people may steal my goods. So there are a host of costs here of having too much material. So the core inventory management, when we say inventory management, is to have that inventory so that the sum of both these two costs, okay, of not having enough as well as having too much is minimized. So we have to minimize uh, the cost of not having too much plus the cost of having too much and that's what uh, inventory management is all about. Uh, let's go to the next part, two decisions. When I say inventory management and there are two decisions, what actually I mean? The two decisions here our number one decision is how much to order okay how much and the second decision that i have as an inventory manager is when to order and in both cases how much or when i can my decision can be fixed so i order a fixed quantity or i order a variable quantity and in when also i may have the fixed i may order every fixed intervals um, I order every Monday or every third of the month or every a fixed intervals I, or I could order in a variable. Um, so, so I order it whenever I need it. That's variable. All right. So whenever I have fixed, how much is fixed and when is fixed, those are our traditional economic order quantity or what we call as EOQ based systems. Okay. Um, this is applicable only in the case of highly reliable, highly reliable systems when uh, the demand is highly reliable, supply is highly reliable. Um, so when is fixed, how much is also fixed. So for example, in cases where milk comes into our home, every day um, we have a fixed quantity of milk coming. So when is fixed, how much is more or less fixed. Second is 
how much is fixed but when is variable these are what is called as reorder point systems rop i'm sorry it's a reorder point now in reorder point systems reorder point how much is fixed when is variable so we create let's say this is the y axis represents my inventory and the x axis represents time and i create a reorder point level and the inventory is used up whenever the inventory reaches at this point i place an order so at some point i after some lead time i'll get the inventory how much i order is fixed i order a fixed quantity when i order so this time i use a faster i'm i it reaches faster here it took so long to reach and here i use a faster i order inventory again it comes here next time the usage is slower so whenever it reaches here i or place my order um so this is called classic reorder point we'll study reorder point in detail in one of the videos here um in this system how much is variable but when is fixed these systems are called periodic systems in periodic systems uh, we create a period of review so same let this be inventory and let this be time and my period of review is this is time i'm sorry my period of review is let's say a week or a month every week i review and i have a target level this is my maximum inventory that i'm planning to keep so in this week i use up so much and this is the gap so i order this whatever is the gap next week i don't use up material the gap is much lesser so i order this much so what i'm ordering is only a little whatever i've used up between my target level which is fixed and what so here when i order is fixed every week or every month but how much i order depends on what i have used up the last when both are variable is called my classical lot for lot systems l for l the lot for lot systems indicate i order whatever i need whenever i need these systems are highly suitable for just in time or lean usage uh, they become very expensive monitoring is expensive so these are the four types of inventory systems uh fine now once we decide the inventory systems the next step is classification now the classification of inventory one of the easiest classification to have is what we have here is what we call as the abc system of classification the abc system of classification helps us divide inventory into three parts a b and c now look at this chart here i have 10 items these are the unit cost of the item um the units used so the value of usage value of usage is unit cost times the unit used so item number f23 the first item is 36% of the total and item number 5 uh, which is p27 is 3% of the total we have arranged according to the descending order of the value of usage uh and cumulative percentage item a is 36% a and b combined is 68% abc combined is 82% and so on and so forth okay so all the items 100% now here a and b which the item first two items f23 and r92 uh, these two materials which occupy about 68% both of them would become a class items okay so two items or 20% of the items become uh, give me 70% of my value approximately they become a class three items these three items um f45 s88 and p27 together they contribute about 25% 27% in my case so these three items are my b class item and these five items you know 1 2 3 4 5 they don't contribute too much of value okay the five numerically they are 50% of my total items but these three combined become my c class item so abc is classifying items depending on the value of usage okay the value of usage a category high value of usage so you must control it strongly c category the value of usage is not high the numerically they are high but value is not high so you we might not focus so much on the c class items the inventory management activities are typically focused on a class items so you know what we do here is we diverting our attention 
to A class giving it more attention and the trivial many these are the vital A class is vital few uh, and the trivial many we do not give as much attention. So this ABC is what we call also be, is based on the Pareto principle where you have or also called the 80-20 rule. You focus attention on the few which contributes a lot. Um, these are not the only ways of uh, managing inventory. There are other ways of managing inventory also. Uh, for example, you have the um, uh, FSM. We classify material based on is it fast moving, is it slow moving or is it non moving. You know, So the fast moving items we may, st if it's stores, fast moving items I may st closer to my dispatch, non moving I may stock farther away from my dispatch. Fast moving items I may use um, a different management technique. Vital Essential Desirable VED, VED I may generally keep a higher safety stock, desirable I may not keep safe higher safety stock, government local foreign items these are how I am buying so my buying process will be different for government local foreign, scarce desirable easily available so the idea of classification is that if we classify material along as per different norms it helps us create segments and manage each those segments of material differently. That is the whole purpose of uh, classification of inventory. Uh, the last part of this video is inventory metrics, measuring inventory and one of the simplest ways of measuring uh, inventory is what we call as inventory turns. Inventory turns is inventory turns. Inventory turns tells us how good are we at measuring inventory and the simple formula for inventory turns is what we call as cost of goods sold COGS divided by average inventory average inventory both of these items COGS we can get uh, from the financial statements we can get it from profit and loss account uh, and uh, your average inventory we get from balance sheet and this tells us how good we are as inventory managers ideal the terms must be as high as possible so when the turns are high, let's suppose, let's say a simple situation, my COGS is um, 300 and my average inventory, it could be 300 dollars, 300 rupees or whatever, average inventory is say 150. In that case, my turns, inventory turns is 300 divided by 150 which is 2. So I'm, I'm to create a business of 300 rupees, I have to invest 150 rupees. But suppose I can do it with an investment of 50. So my inventory turns in the second case becomes, uh, in the second case my inventory turns becomes 300 divided by 50 equals 6. So the same business I am doing with much lower inventory investment. And so I, I suddenly need much lesser money to do the same business which is so very good. Uh, sometimes we measure inventory in the days of stock. So how many days? So suppose I use up my daily use is um, daily use is 300 uh, units. Here the 300 units is my daily use. Please don't confuse it with COGS here. Daily is 300 units, and I have I have say 1,200 units with me. So this tells me that my inventory is sufficient to last 4 days. I have 4 days of stock. Now this is a very intuitive way of measuring inventory. You know? so everybody in the firm in business understands alright. I have inventory necessary for me that will last me for the next 4 days. So I need to worry about 4 days later. So this is a very intuitive measure. Uh, so these are two major metrics uh, which we use for inventory management. I hope you like this second video. Uh, please uh, follow this channel for other videos on inventory management and in, uh, like it and share it with your friends. I keep enjoying learning. Thank you.